let's look at Booking Holdings. And this company has um, Priceline and Kayak, among other companies that book travel services. And in order to figure out the intrinsic value of any company, let's start out with their market cap. Six point seven billion and the stock price is a hefty sixteen thirty one thirty. They probably don't split, maybe that's why they, they're so high. So we're gonna figure out the future estimated free cash flow of the company. And then we're gonna discount that back to today's dollars. And then once we get the value of the company. We're going to divide it by the number of shares outstanding, which is 4 million. And we're going to figure out the estimated stock price. And if it's below the actual stock price, we consider it a buy. And if it's above, we consider it not a buy or a sell. So let's start with free cash flow. And this is one of the best indicators of a business is their free cash flow. How much cash? they have left over after operating a business each year. And you see a lot of companies, especially the newer ones or the growth companies that have negative free cash flow. So every year they're going deeper into, deeper into debt. So you wanna see companies with a positive free cash flow like this company. Those are the type of businesses you wanna invest in. Let's get the net income for the past four years. And let's see the revenue. So they've had some nice jumps in revenue. So this looks like a pretty good stock so far. As you can see, free cash flow, it's 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 pretty consistent between three and a half and four four point nine billion. But net income has jumped a lot. Wow, that, that's a good sign for an investor. And the revenue has also jumped a lot. So everything looks pretty good so far. Um, and my, my um, spreadsheet calculated the future free cash flow of the company already. So now we need a discount rate because every company pays at different terms. So we're gonna find the terms for this company. So let's see their interest expense. 266 million. That's the interest they pay on the debt. And now let's see how much debt they have. Current debt. About a billion in current debt. And long term debt. Long term debt is debt that's due beyond one year. So it might be due in like two years, 10 years, 20 years. And they pay 3% interest on their debt. But as you know, we need to discount the debt, the effective tax rate, because that interest payments on the debt is a write-off. So income before tax, so 6 billion. And income tax. So the effective tax rate is 18%, that sounds about right. So even though they pay 3.1% of the debt, it actually costs them 2.5%. And now to calculate the cost of equity. So let's find the beta, the volatility of the company. As I suspected, it's, not, it's pretty low, 1.03. So it pretty much moves with the market. And the cost of equity is 10.23%. So the cost of equity is almost always more than the cost of debt. So you, you may think, why not just take out all debt instead of, um, instead of selling stock? Because it's cheaper. It is cheaper, but you have to pay interest on the debt. And if you, ha if you have a cash flow problem, problems and you can't pay your interest, you're forced into bankruptcy, where if, it's, if you sold stock, you don't have to pay dividends. So they're kind of moving in line with you. So the WAC, which is a blend of the equity and the debt is 5.88%. So that's how much it costs this company to get money. 
So let's calculate the intrinsic value of the company using that WAC. And I calculate the free cash flow for four years and a terminal value. And discounting it back today, they have $214 billion of value of the company according to the this particular model. And at four million shares, okay, it's 66 billion. You always gotta double check. Okay, so okay, that looks right. Um, so 66 billion is the market cap. I'm glad I caught that. And they have 41 million shares outstanding. So based on a PV of 104 billion, we calculate an intrinsic value of $2,500 a share, which is above the $1,600 a share. So we would consider this a buy, and they're trading at a 36% discount, which is a nice cushion. So even if your model is a little off, which all models are, you have a little bit of cushion, a little comfort there. And it's interesting to look at this. This is the historical price of, of the stock the past five years. And it's at 1631. And if you see, it's it's it was trading pretty close to intrinsic value at some points. It's always been trading at slight discount. Um, now you're getting a real discount. Um, three months ago, you would have been, gotten a huge discount in March when everything dropped. But you're still getting a discount. But the the discounted cash flow model looks at your financials, your actual financials the past few years. It doesn't look into the future. Like nobody can predict the future. Now that's your job as the analyst to maybe look at the 10K, try to identify is this stock, is this company going to be strong the next few years, especially during coronavirus, and um, look at its competitors. And there's, there's a lot of like things you can look at, and it, I know it's, it's hard and it sounds daunting, but this is just the first step, and it's a good step, uh, uh, seeing the company. But thanks for watching the video, and let me know if you want me to do videos of other companies as well.